You look like humans. You move like humans. You hold things in your fingers like humans. The expressions which play across your faces and in your intensely human-looking eyes are expressions that we instinctively feel we recognize as human expressions. We look you in the face and we think, we know what you're like, but we don't. Or rather, we actually block off any possible glimmering of understanding of what you may be like by making easy and tempting assumptions. The most misleading assumptions are the ones you don't even know you're making. I crept closer, slowly and quietly, on my hands and knees, till I was about 18 inches away from you. You glanced around at me unconcernedly, as if I was just someone who walked into the room and continued your contemplations. I guess that you were probably about the same height as me, over six feet tall, but I would think about twice as heavy. As I moved again, you shifted yourself away from me, just about six inches, as if I had sat slightly too close to you. It's so bloody hard not to anthropomorphize, but these impressions keep on crowding in on you, because they spark so much instant recognition, however illusory that recognition might be. You retreated a little, and I lay down again, about four feet from you. I love the extraordinary thoughtfulness of your expressions. The most disconcerting intelligence seemed to be apparent from the sudden sidelong glances you would give me, prompted not by any particular move I had made, but apparently by a thought that had struck you. I began to feel how patronizing it was of us to presume to judge your intelligence, as if ours was any kind of standard by which to measure. I tried to imagine instead how you saw us. But of course, that's almost impossible to do. Because the assumptions you end up making as you try to bridge the imaginative gap are of course your own. I pictured you lying there easily in your own world, tolerating my presence in it, but I think possibly sending me signals to which I did not know how to respond. And then I pictured myself beside you. I watched your eyes again, wise and knowing eyes, and wondered about this business of trying to teach you language, our language. Why? What is there to suggest we would listen to anything one of you could tell us, or that you would be able to tell us of your life in a language that hasn't been born of that life. I thought, maybe it is not that you have yet to gain a language, it is that we have lost one. Somewhere in the genetic history, that we each carry with us, in every cell of our body, was a deep connection with this creature, as inaccessible to us now as last year's dreams, but like last year's dreams, always invisibly and unfathomably present. <laughs> 